For 100 years, Memorial Continental Hall, with its white marble columns and sweeping porticos, has been a familiar sight to residents and visitors to the nation's capital. Located just two blocks from the White House in downtown Washington, D.C., Memorial Continental Hall's prominent location and exquisite design lend to its mystery and intrigue, often raising questions about what the building is, who it belongs to, and the purpose it serves. Memorial Continental Hall was built in 1905 by the Daughters of the American Revolution to serve as the organization's national headquarters and as a place to hold their annual convention, DAR Continental Congress. The vision and planning of Memorial Continental Hall began almost immediately following the founding of the DAR in 1890. At just the second meeting of the organization, DAR founder Mary Smith Lockwood proposed the idea that the society build a fireproof building for its headquarters to safeguard the relics and papers that the members proposed to preserve. President General Presiding Mary Ellett Cabell shortly thereafter described the intended purpose of the building. What the society needs most and first is a home. The women of America want a house where their historic records can be lodged, a spacious hall where debates and addresses can take place, fireproof apartments where the relics and treasures of the society can be preserved, a commodious place of business where officers and members can meet for the transaction of their affairs. Raising funds to build Memorial Continental Hall was a mammoth undertaking, but the daughters went at it with typical determination, organization, and imagination. States and chapters sponsored a variety of events, including use of penny boxes, wherein each chapter was to save a penny a day for a year, then send the money to Washington. Once the architectural plan was in place, parts of the building were subscribed and funded for naming rights. The larger, more populous state societies paid for entire rooms, while smaller states funded items like windows, stair rails, or doors. By the first Continental Congress in 1892, the society had collected $650, an amount that would grow to $109,000 by 1902. The DAR Building Committee, charged with finding a location, explored numerous Washington area sites before finally settling on a somewhat unfashionable and semi-rural part of the city called Foggy Bottom. Because the area was once swampland, some members expressed concerns about both the health and structural risks of locating the building on the site. Senator James McMillan, chairman of the Senate Subcommittee on the Improvement of the Park System, wrote to the DAR President General, assuring her that the area being considered would be an excellent location, and that 17th Street would be one of the great park approaches and a thoroughfare of importance. Reassured, the DAR purchased the several lots that made up the block bounded by 17th, 18th, C, and D Streets. Senator McMillan's plan for developing the area had at its core the basic design for the city of Washington, created by Pierre L'Enfant in 1791. McMillan enhanced his plan to incorporate elements of the 1893 World's Columbian Exposition in Chicago, which captured the nation's interest in the concept of what was called the White City because of the color of the buildings. Many DAR members who had worked on or visited the Chicago Exposition encouraged the White City concept as a model for the facade of Memorial Continental Hall. A national competition to select an architect was established. Members rejected a number of designs in their pursuit for a structure that could be functional and serve as an exquisite memorial to their revolutionary patriot ancestors. Edward Pierce Casey, who had designed the interior of the Library of Congress, was ultimately chosen as the architect. His winning design for Memorial Continental Hall was in the classical revival style of the Beaux-Arts. Work on the hall progressed relatively quickly and the central core of the building containing the auditorium was built by 1905. Finally, on April 17, 1905, the daughters met in their new home and officially dedicated Memorial Continental Hall. 
it would be another four years before the hall was complete enough to be occupied by the society's offices. When Memorial Continental Hall was finally completed in 1910, the stately facade set the precedent of beauty for its soon-to-be neighbors. The Pan-American Union, now called the Organization of American States, and the American Red Cross both began construction within a few years after the hall was built. The memorial portico on the south side of the building is dedicated to the 13 original colonies. The portico consists of 13 monolithic columns, each with the name of one of the original colonies carved at the base. The floor plan of the hall's interior incorporated three central features. The auditorium was the most elaborate room in the building, bringing the monumental character of the exterior inside. Box seats overlook the stage and are capped by majestic, outstretched American eagles. The DAR Library flanked the auditorium in the North Gallery, and the DAR Museum flanked it in the South Gallery. All were surrounded by offices for the various national DAR officers, committees, and staff. While much of the original interior has been altered, some areas are strikingly similar to the original design. The grand entrance, the Pennsylvania foyer, is classically clad in Vermont marble, featuring a medallion of the Pennsylvania State Seal and busts representing American revolutionary heroes. The lavish Connecticut boardroom on the second floor contains elaborate woodwork and crystal chandeliers. The banquet hall opens to a terrace on top of the memorial portico, providing an amazing view of the city. Less than 10 years after the building's completion, the DAR began construction on a new administration building to serve as the organization's business center. The rooms that had been the offices for the early workings of the society were offered back to the states in order to be decorated to accurately reflect a specific time, place, and authentic interior decor. The ever-expanding DAR eventually outgrew the Memorial Continental Hall Auditorium. Plans got underway to build a larger auditorium to hold the annual Continental Congress. In 1929, Constitution Hall, able to seat 4,000 people, was opened. By 1949, the organization's adjoining buildings took up an entire city block. The museum gallery moved into the new administration building and the Memorial Continental Hall Auditorium became the DAR Library.